Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3D P, and today I'm going to talk about installing Octoprint on my Ender 3 V2 Neo. So let's go ahead and get started. Over the last month or so, I've been upgrading and fixing this Ender 3 V2 Neo that I got off eBay really cheap because it was a broken return, I think, from Amazon. And I've pretty much got everything working. I've done some small upgrades and I've done some videos in the past, which I'll link above. In the case of this printer, I have it all set up and tuned. I have all the configurations over here in Marlin set up and it's actually printing pretty good for me. But I've decided I want to go ahead and test the process of installing Clipper on the fault board. Before I do that, I thought I really want to back up all my settings. And I've done a previous video on that using Octoprint. And so I thought, let's go ahead and get this printer. It's still running Marlin, it's still running the professional firmware. And let's go ahead and set up Octoprint and walk you through the, those steps. And then I can go ahead and back up all my settings. And then if I want to test Clipper, I can go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is let's start off by talking about what is Octoprint. Octoprint can be defined as a web interface for your 3D printer. Now, again, I'm just reading that from the website. But a better way of thinking of it is I use it personally to control and monitor all my printers. I can use this to send prints to the printer. I can also use it to monitor things remotely. In fact, I have it set up where I can even monitor from my, my phone, wherever I'm at. And there's also a variety of plugins which add all sorts of excellent functionality, including histories, recordings, time lapses, almost anything I could possibly want. Octoprint's an awesome thing once again, to 3D printing to start utilizing. It really makes monitoring your printers and administering what you're doing super easy and super helpful. And I highly recommend it. Now to get started with Octoprint, you're gonna need the following. At a minimum, you're gonna need a Raspberry Pi 3 or above or a 0 2 or above, Raspberry Pi 0 2 or above. The In the case of a Raspberry Pi, these are pretty hard to get right now and the more expensive. I've had a lot of success and I've done a previous video on this using the Clipper install and update helper, which lets me install Octoprint as well. And I've used an old PC. Uh, the old PCs I used were $60 as opposed to like $70 for a Raspberry Pi. So using an old desktop was a much better option for me. Today, I'm gonna walk you through the steps of installing a Raspberry Pi. And as I said, Raspberry Pi three or above, if you choose anything else, you're probably looking at lag. The lag gets worse as you connect webcams and also as you install third-party plugins. So just be aware that depending on the hardware you use, you can expect it to sometimes strain with Octoprint. The more things you have hooked to it, the more you're doing, including time lapses and all that. So what we're gonna do is start off by going over to the Octoprint website and doing some downloads and installs. Now, if we go over to the Octoprint website and click on downloads, we have our various options. Now, the easiest thing to do is if you scroll down, find the link to the Raspberry Pi imager, and I'll try to post this link in my video description. So I'm gonna go over that website and just go right ahead and download the version for my Mac. There's also a Windows version and a Linux version as well. So we're gonna go ahead and download this and install the program. So let me pause and we'll come back. So I've successfully installed the Raspberry Pi Imager and to kick things off, I'm gonna to go to Choose OS, Other Specific Purpose OS, click 3D Printing, and then if I scroll down, I should find OctoPi. OctoPi is a bundled version of Raspbian and Octoprint all bundled together. So it should work right out of the box. So I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to select stable version rather than the new camera stack. I'm more familiar with the stable version. I think that's better for introductory users. Click that. Then I'm going to take my SD card. So I have an SD card. In my case, I'm going to use a 64 gig SD card. They were only slightly more than the 16 gig. So I thought, let's go ahead and go with this. Now the brand I use, I did some research and this is a pretty cheap SD card, but at the same time, it's also rated as one of the best in speeds, at least according to several reviews I read. So I'm gonna go ahead and go insert that into my machine. So I've selected the Octopi Stable. 
I'm next going to choose storage. So I'm selecting my storage. And then I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to check set host name. I named the printers after the printer's actual name. So I remember what's what. So Ender, Ender 3 V2 Neo. I'm going to enable SSH. I'm going to set a username and password, Wilson M. And then I'm going to put in my own password. I don't leave it as the default of Pi. I'm going to configure the wireless LAN. So my wireless router's in there. And I'm going to go ahead and type in my router password. Now, something that trips people up is you need to make sure your wireless LAN country is set to your actual country. You don't want it set. And if it's not set to your country, it won't work correctly. So I'm setting it to US. I'm going to go ahead and set local settings and leave it as American Chicago, which is central time. Hit save. And then I'm ready to write. So I'm going to hit write. It's going to erase the SD card. So you want to use an SD card that you can delete. And I'll let this run. Now, in my case, it's going to ask me for my password. And we'll come back in a second. So as of now, Octopi is installed to my SD card. So I'm going to hit continue. And I can go ahead and eject the SD card and move it over to my Raspberry Pi. So we're going to start working on the Raspberry Pi next. Now that I've installed Raspbian and Octoprint, on the SD card. I'm going to get ahead and insert it into my Raspberry Pi. I'm just going to turn this on so you can see the lights coming on. This will take a couple minutes. I'm also going to go ahead and turn the printer on. And I'm going to give this a couple minutes to install Raspbian fully on the Pi. And then we'll go back over to the browser and take a look at Octo. To get things started, all that I need to do is type in my address bar the address I put in when I was setting up Octoprint and Raspbian. So I used e3v2neo.local. So I've typed that in, and now this brings me to the setup wizard. So I'm just going to go ahead and run through this. So I'm going to hit next. I don't have a backup file. And hit next again. I'm going to add in my username and password and create an account. I'll go ahead and hit next. And I want to test port, test the name resolution and I'm going to go ahead and enable the connectivity check and hit next. I'm going to enable anonymous usage tracking. Next, enable plug-in blacklist processing. I'm just going to go ahead and leave these as is. I can change this later if I decide to add a webcam. I'm going to go ahead and change this to Ender E3 V2 Neo and the model. I'm going to type in Ender 3 V2 to me and hit next, hit finished and reload. Now, the first thing I see in my case is there is an update available and install that update. Now I'm very religious about this. When there's an update, I go ahead and install it. That way my system has all the current updates and security fixes. So once it's done updating, I'm just gonna hit reload now. And then I'm gonna hit save configuration, auto connect on startup. I'm just going to try leaving these on auto and see if they'll connect right away. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. In my case, it did connect, so that's good. Make a couple quick changes here. So I'm going to click on printer profile. Let's just edit this. Let's go over to print build volume and change this to 235, 235, 250, which are the defaults for the Ender 3 V2 Neo. Oops, before I leave, let me check the axis. All this looks okay. I'll just leave that as is. It is 0.4. So that all looks good. Just want to confirm that. And let's just take a quick look down and see if there's anything else I want to mess with. So auto appears to work. And let's go ahead over to control. And right now I don't have a webcam setup, which is okay. And switch over to the printer so we can take a quick look. Now, as you can see, I'm on the control screen in Octoprint and also looking at my printer. Just to test things and move the Z axis up. If you look, it's moving. That's good. Now let's try moving. So the X axis is moving and the y-axis is moving. So right now, everything's working as it should be. So I have a working instance of Octoprint, and now I can install whatever I want. This was a quick and dirty 
video showing how to install Octoprint. It's really pretty simple, particularly if you use the uh, Raspberry Pi imager and the already built images. It's super simple and easy to do. In a future video, I'll go ahead and show you this process to install Clipper Mainsail. And again, it's pretty simple. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. This is Mike from Minimal3DP. Again, I thank you for your time and I hope you have a good night. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you like my work, please feel free to share and let me know if you have any feedback or criticisms. I'd love to hear those as well. Otherwise, again, thank you for your time and happy 3D printing. Talk to you soon. Bye.